Hi everybody, uh, today we're in the original garage building here at Vent Haven Museum to talk about this set of dummies that was used by vaudevillian ventriloquist Jules Vernon. Uh, Jules Vernon emigrated from India to the United States and performed here in the early 20th century. So I know I've heard about Vernon, I know about Vernon, I know about the figures. What was the single most interesting fact about Jules Vernon? He went blind as an adult. Jules Vernon went blind when he was 51 years old, and by that time he and his wife had this act very well established, and she didn't want, they didn't want anyone to feel sorry for him. So she would set his dummies up for him on stage, and then she'd go off into the wings, or she would whisper to him about how to get out on stage unassisted. So I think that's a remarkable tale that he did not want anyone to know about that or feel sorry for him. And there's this old wives' tale that's been floating around for years that we have oh. found no confirmation of right. uh, about a thread being being run off stage from this board, the performance board off stage, that he could hang on and follow on to, to, to get this. But in fact, as often as that story has been told, we can't find any confirmation no. that that was really the case. No. Apparently his wife Minnie whispered and said, not that way, you're going to fall into the pit. <laughs> I think it was probably more succinct direction than that, but maybe. but maybe it was just a caution about the pit, Tom. Could be. Let's talk about the dummies, because I think me, they are so cool. Tell me what you know. Now, there, we should note, and you'll see a picture here in a moment, there's one figure missing, but Vernon didn't even have that figure himself the last number of years he's performed, uh, and it was a common thing in vaudeville to have an old woman figure and an old man figure. The old man would have been on this side behind uh, the little gentleman here. Uh, he's gone. We don't know what happened to him, but they they would have repartee between each other. Uh, the little guy on the end, that's Happy, uh, and his role in the whole um, uh, act was just to laugh, and he cued the audience when to laugh. One of the other characters would say something funny, and Happy would laugh, ah! and how would he laugh? It's an unusual movement. Yes, it's not a traditional vent figure at all. There's a leather um, strip that comes out the back of the Happy's head that's tied to a foot pedal. So if I gently push, put pressure on the foot pedal, it will cause his mouth to open. So that is how he would be made to laugh. And then the other figures would, uh, of course, do more of the standard repartee. This little fellow's name is... This is Little Joe, and he did the majority of the talking in the act. He was the smart aleck, or the fresh kid, as we would know him today. Uh, this is his partner. Yes, this is Sam. Uh -huh. Sam. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Nettie in front and George. And George. Uh -huh. And George. And the way these operated, and unlike having the traditional head stick, these characters have a hole in the back of their necks when there's just a little simple ring in there. And when you pull down on the ring, the mouth opens and it's spring loaded. Uh, she works the same way. These two work the same way, but of course, he couldn't reach down in here, so he would run a line from there necks through this board. There's holes in this black board and he could control them back here. So it was really an interesting kind of setup. He had all kinds of things going. Kind of like being an organ player or a drummer. You have to be yeah. multifunctional. Yeah. So what else? What else? Let's see. Um, I don't know. Can I tell you one interesting story oh, about right. this set? Tell this is a story I love. It's an anecdote. My favorite ventriloquist is a guy by the name of Phil DeRay, another British ventriloquist. Phil DeRay saw Vernon perform with this set when he was just a kid, like five years old. Sixty years later, Phil DeRay came to visit WS, and this would have been in the 1960s here at uh, Vent Haven. And W.S. Berger writes that when Phil walked in and saw this set, that he sank to his knees and wept. Isn't that a great story? That's a wonderful I tale. I love that story. And we have so many stories like that at Vent Haven, mm -hmm. and that's why you should come visit. Thank you so much for watching. If there's something you'd like to see behind the scenes, email Lisa at curator at venthaven.org.